Now that we have all of this set up, we can prove our main theorem. Which remember said that given any diagonalizable matrix A, there exists, and a function f on its set of eigenvalues, there exists a polynomial Q such that Q of A equals F of A. And so far, based on the facts that we just proved, we know there exists a polynomial Q such that Q of lambda i equals F of lambda i for all of the eigenvalues of that matrix. Therefore, if we compute F of d, which was defined to be F of lambda 1, F of lambda n, of our diagonal matrix d, then this is the same exact thing as Q of lambda 1, Q of lambda n, with 0 everywhere else, by this result. We can find a single polynomial Q that satisfies this. But this is exactly the same thing as Q of D. Well, why is that? Well, if we write our diagonal matrix D out, and we apply the polynomial Q to it, right? so let's just see why this is true. If we take our diagonal matrix, and then we plug in our polynomial, so we had, what was it? It was A0 times the identity n by n matrix. This is what, um, if we view Q as a polynomial, and we plug in the formula for Q of D, this is by definition of a matrix applied to a polynomial, sorry, a polynomial um, with input a matrix, plus A1D plus A2D squared plus AN minus 1 D to the N minus 1. And we know what this looks like as a matrix. This is the identity. It looks like A0 all along the diagonals and zero everywhere else. This is A1 times lambda 1, all the way down to A1 times lambda to the n, lambda n. And then here we have plus A2D squared. Now, D squared, since D is a diagonal matrix, is just lambda I squared in each of the diagonal terms. So it's A2, lambda 1 squared, all the way down to A2, lambda n squared. And similarly for all of the other terms up until this last one. Then what happens when you add all of these matrices together? Well, you get A0 on the top left term, you get A0 plus A1 lambda 1 plus A2 lambda 1 squared plus dot 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 A n mon minus lambda 1 to the n minus 1. That's exactly what Q of lambda 1 is. And similarly for all of the other terms. So this justifies why this equality holds. And of course, Q of any matrix is defined similarly. So in particular, Q of A equals A0 times the identity plus A1 times A plus A2 times A squared, and so on. So now, let's show that F of A equals Q of A. Now, F of A, by definition of F of A, is P times F of the diagonal matrix times P inverse, where P is the matrix of eigenvectors corresponding to those eigenvalues, is a matrix of eigenvectors. Now, F of D, by this calculation, is also Q applied to D. And so that equation is true by what we just showed. Now, we know what Q of D looks like. It looks like this. And we also know what happens when we distribute P throughout. So we get something that looks like A0, P0, 
P times P inverse plus A1 PD P inverse all the way up to A n minus 1 P D to the n minus 1 P inverse. That's just what that looks like when you distribute P and P inverse on both sides. Now this is A. And what is this expression? And likewise for all of the terms in between, well, let's just let's just look at what happens if we um, if we set a, if n is like three or something like that, or maybe even two is enough. Um, so let's look at this term. P d squared p inverse. So p d squared p inverse also equals p times d times d times p inverse. And because p and p inverse are, well, inverses of each other, we can plug in a p inverse p between these two d's. And this gives us p d p inverse times p d p inverse again. And this is just a, and this is just a, so we get a squared. Therefore, when we actually write out what all of these things equal, we get a0 p p inverse plus a1, which is the identity, sorry. This is the identity matrix. And this is a plus a2 a squared plus all the way up to a n minus 1 a to the n minus 1. And this is the definition of Q of A. So this shows us that that theorem is true. So this has an interesting corollary. So let A be diagonalizable. And let B be any square matrix of the same size. And suppose that they satisfy the fact that when we multiply them in any order, they're equal to each other. Then F of A b equals b f of a for all functions that are defined on the eigenvalues of a. And how do we prove this? Well, because a is diagonalizable, then f of a equals q of a for some polynomial q. And because it's a polynomial, if we replace this expression with q of a times b, so if we have q of a times b, this is a polynomial in a. And each of the terms look like a to the jth power times b. Right? So you have a to the jth power times b. Now a to the jth power means you write the matrix a j times, and if you have a b on one side, you can use this to move each of those a's one over at a time. You can move them over one at a time. Therefore a, j, a to the jth times b equals b times a to the jth. Therefore, it's immediate that this equals b times q of a. And it immediately solves this problem because q of a equals f of a. And the interesting thing about this is that b can be any matrix whatsoever, and a only has to be diagonalizable for this to be true. So hopefully this is an interesting fact, namely that given any function, at, at least that's defined on the set of eigenvalues of a. It could be defined on a larger set 
um, of the subset of the complex numbers, but at the very least, if it's defined on those eigenvalues, then we can always find a polynomial for which, when we apply that function, which could be completely wild, such, such as the logarithm or something like that, then there's a polynomial that gives us the same value for that matrix if we apply that polynomial to the matrix versus if we apply the function to that matrix. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that um, we're working with finite dimensional matrices. One of the interesting things about linear algebra is what happens when your matrices become of infinite order. And then this really becomes a much more subtle issue and clearly the method that we've used should probably break down. For instance, we're not working with polynomials anymore. And a lot of this is explored, for instance, in functional analysis and spectral theory um, and the functional calculus for such operators. 